Join me today as I update my full fireplace surround for under $30. Yeah, under $30. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Life with Marianne and Joe. My name is Joe and if you're new to our channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you'll think about subscribing and give me a thumbs up to help my channel out. If you don't know me, I do a lot of seasonal decorating and home projects and garden projects and uh, we also uh, share some of our travel uh, travels with you as well as when I get a chance to uh, pin Marianne down to do some cooking videos. You'll see more of me than you will of Marianne only because she's uh, crazy busy all the time and uh, it's hard for me to uh, you know get her into these videos but she does pop up once in a while and uh, she enjoys uh, seeing you guys and hearing from you guys as well as I do. So today, what we're going to be doing is we will be um, going over uh, the update on my faux fireplace, which is in the uh, former living room, which is now the, uh, the piano room or the music room. Since we got a uh, baby grand piano, um, I have been doing a lot of uh, work in that room. It's, I feel like I spend most of my days in that room. When I'm, uh, when I'm home, I'm in that room a lot, either practicing the piano or uh, working on various projects. Uh, so today, I'm gonna be working on a full project. Now listen, this is for a full fireplace, what I'm doing. You do not, you cannot do what I'm doing. If you have a real fireplace, you're gonna have a fire. Um, or anything that you know gets hot so actually I built this fireplace a few years back and I built it for Christmas decorations I wanted a focal point for Christmas I wanted a mantle in here and I built it out in the yard with sc scrap wood I remember the day clearly Marianne was busy cooking in the kitchen and I was hammering away and sawing and everything else and she came out the door and she said what are you doing out here and I said, I'm building a fireplace. And she was like, oh, okay. So I built the fireplace in the yard and I dragged it in here. And it was only gonna be for that season, but I, I loved it. I thought it was great. It created a focal point in the room, like I said, and uh, we decided to keep it there. It, actually, I moved it from one wall. If you look at my old videos, you see it on a totally different wall than it is now, but I really like where it is right now. But anyway, um, since we got the piano in there, I wanted more of, um, I don't want to say an old world look because it's not, but it does come off that way. I think it, it has a much more elegant look in uh, what my final, um, my final project came out as. Um, it was a little bit of a diluted pathway to get there. I thought I was going to paint the tiles at first and give a marble look, and then I scrapped that idea. And then I had some uh, uh, peel and stick tiles from Dollar General and they were just crapola the way it looked and everything because they were so bumpy. Um, and then I revisited the idea of using the peel and stick from the Dollar Tree. I'm using tin, the, uh, what looks like that uh, hammered tin, what they used to use on the ceilings. Um, and uh, you know, I thought, hey, I can give this a very, uh, a very elegant, old world kind of a look that I thought would look really appropriate in here. But uh, this time around, I knew what to do. I got rid of that sticky backing right away. And uh, these are not as bumpy as those the subway tiles that I were gonna use. So I think the project came out, <clears throat> I'm looking at it right now. I love it, I love the way it looks. Uh, so anyway. I'm gonna show you the process, how I did that, and then I'll catch you at the end again, I'll talk, but remember, this is not, repeat, this is not for a real fireplace, all right? Okay, so let's take a look at how I got to where I got. Okay, so here's the fireplace as it is right now with those beige tiles and that white around the surround. I had to remove a piece of trim right there and I have to fill that in. So it's hard to tell, but I added another couple of courses of tile and then I added another piece of trim to fill in that spot up there. So at this point, I thought I was going to paint it, so I did the tile work and I grouted. 
All right, so I was gonna paint the tile, which is this right here, but I don't wanna ruin it and, um, yeah, so I just don't wanna ruin it in case I hate, hate it. Uh, so what I did was I went out and I got these peel and stick tiles because I thought they looked very brick-like. I know it's a subway, but I think it looks very brick-like. So <clears throat> I'm gonna put this up. Uh, I'm gonna see how it looks, and if I have to paint anything, I would paint this. I don't know how this takes paint, though it's very, very slippery. Uh, so I just might like it white like this. But what I need to do to make it look realistic is you see this? I, here's the first course. I'm going to cut this out here like this. And I'm going to cut this one out like this. And then the next one I'm going to cut so that the long one, this one, would be in here. This way you won't see lines and, you know, like a crappy look. I'm, I'm going to try to make it look as realistic as possible. Again, I might paint it, but I might not. I might just like this white shiny look. So we'll see. All right. So a little manipulation here. So you see what I did? I cut this out and then I cut this one to, you know, slip in here, but you had to lower it. So that means the top was missing. So then I had to cut off the bottom over here and then I'll add that to the top like that. So I'm going to start putting it up because um, I need to do that. So at this point, I decided to do a dry fit, which is what you're seeing. Okay, so can we say disaster with that stuff? Um, as you can see, I started to put it on. I got the first layer on. And what happens is, you know, you have to cut it. Like I told you to fit in like a puzzle piece. Unfortunately, every time you cut it, what happens is the backing, the sticky stuff, it just falls off. So it's actually not stuck to the entire tile. It's only stuck around the outer border. So as soon as you cut into it, that sticky material just falls right off. So I'm laughing now, but I wasn't laughing before. And um, so I tried to, you know, gorilla, gorilla glue it into place. And that, that was just disastrous. And also another thing is it's spongy. So when you touch it, it like goes in and out and in and out. So it might look good in pictures and it might look good on, you know, I've seen it on YouTube too, and that's why I wanted to use it. It looks great, but you know what? It doesn't look good in person, so save your money. It might be only a dollar. I paid a dollar, uh, a, I was gonna say a slice, a dollar a piece at Dollar General. It's a dollar 25, more of a ripoff in Dollar Tree. Um, I mean, you know, like I don't wanna tell you what to do, but I'm just telling you my experience. It stinks. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to something else. Okay, so I painted the bottom of the of the of this black now. I just wanted it like an abyss black. All right, so now I decided I want this old world look. So I went back to the Dollar Tree and I got these tin looking tiles. And here is my inspiration. All right, so I sprayed them with this same exact spray paint that I used on the frames in the room. Okay, and that is um, bare spray paint, uh, hammered uh, umber, I believe, uh, brushed umber or umber. And um, I used, on the tiles I used a gloss and on the frames I used a satin, but it's the same thing. Then if you have a keen eye, for those of you that do, and I know a lot of you do, I put a light spray of copper on here because I wanted it to look like brushed bronze. Now, you could make this way more copperish looking if you like, but I didn't want it so orange for my room. But actually, if you did want more of the copper look, you should spray it with the copper first and then take the brown and then kind of like dab it on and it would pick up all of these highlights. So again, like I just wanted a slight touch of the copper behind this brushed umber because I'm going to be putting gold on top of here because I wanted to match my frames. I know, matchy matchy, I don't care. That's what I like. So once again, here we are and I have 42 inches across this way and I have 42 inches down this way. So Obviously, if they're 12 by 12s, what's going to happen, I take my finger away because it keeps zooming in and out, uh, it will take four of them minus six inches, so three and a half. So I have to do 
um, I have to start from the middle and work out and work out and then see where I have to cut those three inches off and then try to line up the bottom one so that it has an aesthetic look. First thing, I measured halfway and that's where my first tile is gonna start. All right, so I put it up and I measured it and of course it was like a centimeter off. So I had to trim along the top. So I took it back off again and then I measured the next one. And then take note that, see, it, it, I mean, it's a repeating pattern, but look so that it's the same. You see how this is at the top like this? So I made this one at the top like this as well. Um, and I'm just looking, I think they were all, the, every corner is the same. So you're safe, but I'm <laughs> making sure that my cut edge is along the top. Next, I ripped off that shabby adhesive they have on the back it's ridiculous because it's only stuck around the edges and then what happens is the whole inside is lumpy and bumpy so i don't want that that's crap i got rid of that i'm just going to spread glue on this whole thing so it sticks nice and flat all right so i started in the middle as you can see you know what it this to me it's not easy to work with it's giving me a little bit of um you know like i want to punch it but uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, because I ripped off that uh, adhesive in the back, I put glue on it itself. So now it has to kind of set. You just have to like be calm, put your patient's hat on and work with it. It seems so easy. Every time I see somebody use it on um, YouTube, it's like, you know, bing, bing, bing. But of course, it's, that's all staged. Uh, so I'm being realistic with you. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, it is easy because it's like, you know, scissors and stuff like that but uh, you still need to be kind of on top of it. All right, so I'm going to do these two side pieces, which you see I have to cut this angle in here, and then I'm gonna let it set before I do the rest. Okay, so this is the next piece that's in, and it's, um, instead of being uh, 12 inches, I only need it to be um, this length, which is about uh, seven, about eight inches or so, I believe. And uh, so what I had to do was I had to cut off the strip that was right here. There was another one of these pieces right here. So I had to cut it off. I cut it right along the line. And then I had to notch this in for that piece of trim I have around the opening where, the, you know, the firebox is supposed to be. So I just had to put the glue on here now. Okay, so I'm working my way down the side now. I'm making sure that all the lines are all lined up so that it looks like it's supposed to look, okay? So now before I finish that little piece on the bottom, I'm gonna switch over to the other side and fit those in, and then I'll finish those two bottom pieces. All right, so I have all the pieces in, and what I did was I added trim up the side right here. I bought that trim also in Home Depot, and I got a really good price on that because <clears throat> I went for the plastic trim and it was only three uh, forty-eight a piece. I had to buy two eight-foot pieces in order to put this in. It just gives a finishing look to it right here. And then I spray painted it with the same brushed umber uh, bronzy color that I did on the tiles. And then I just quickly dragged some gold acrylic paint over it just so it ties in with those frames on the side as well as the frame up here in the mirror. So I think it made a really big transformation. I, I really like the way it looks. It gives uh, the look that I was after. Que bella, perfecto. Okay, so I really, really like it. I, I, I love the way it looks and I think it coordinates so well with the frame I put on the mirror and the two frames I put on the side and it looks great with the piano and everything else so I'm really really happy with it and I hope you enjoyed it as well and possibly you can adapt this same project to something that you have that you want to give a more old-fashioned old world kind of elegant I think Look, all right, everybody, thank you so much for stopping by. Take care, and I'll be seeing you really soon.